Let me start by saying um, how um, I actually met Cox and Dot. It was a friend of mine called Jackie Estick, and most of the Studio One albums, if you look at the back, most of the liner notes were written by Jackie Estick, and Jackie and I actually went to school. You know, and you know, after I, you know, I, I came back from the States, the first person that I got in touch with was Jackie to find out what the musical scene was like in Jamaica, and he took me straight to Cox and Dot. You know, and um, I just started, you know, doing, you know, recording, listening, and I found out that this was the best place, you know, in the island to record a Studio One. He was the, 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 the most knowledgeable person as far as music was concerned, even though he didn't read and write music, but he was very knowledgeable, and he was a nice guy. So I started my career, you know, recordings with Coxon. And I remember uh, the first, one of the first songs that, you know, he gave me to sing. It was um, uh, a song called In the Summertime. <laughs> And then, the you know, he started the you know, feeding me songs, you, you know, but I used to like going to Studio One because at that time, you know, all the, all the, the, the young, you know, budding, you know, singers, you know, um, were just nice, a nice bunch of guys and the vibe was, was really, really good because we'd sit out in, 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 the, in the yard, there was the mango tree, you know, whenever ma a mango would drop, you know, 10, 20 guys would be diving for the same mango, you know, and it was just great vibes, you know, you, somebody lit one cigarette and would pass all the way around to everybody else, you know, because that was the way it was, you know, everybody was friends, you know, um, there, there, there was um, uh, like an allegiance to, to, to Coxon because you had, you had other recording studios like, like Duke Reed, you know, but what I found out afterwards is like all the guys who recorded at Duke Reed, they would bring the same songs to, to Coxon and record them. So whenever um, Duke Reed said, I've got an exclusive, don't be that the same exclusive because <laughs> it, it was a, a money thing, you know what I'm saying? Because if, if you got um, two pounds to record a song with Duke Reed, you could do, do the same thing at Coxon, you know, and get a couple of quid also. So people just spread it around. But yeah, I, I, you know, um, in recording for that, I found out that, you know, this guy, you know, knew so much about the business because he would listen to a song and he would come to and say, Mark, this song is for you. And even though I would like that song, he said, no, this is not your song. You can't manage this one. This one is for Mark. You know, so he was knowledgeable in that way. And most of his songs were hits. So um, I remember when uh, he, um, I, I recorded um, the, the Bob Andy song. You know, I, I thought it was an American song, you know, and he said, I got a song for you um, to experience. I want you to record this. She's always saying we were meant to be. Somehow she thought I'd be around. Uh, talking about um, the first time I went into a studio, I, I was blown away. You know, I, I was mesmerized, like I, I guess everybody that the first time you walk into a recording studio, you know, or a ph photographic studio, the same thing. You know, you, you're, 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 you're blown away because sometimes it, it doesn't add up to your expectations. Sometimes it's way past your expectations, right? So it's either they or they, right? But I was, I was blown away when I walked into a recording studio because to hear your voice coming through speakers, you know, uh, and, and then seeing it on a bit of plastic, and it's coming out of that, it's mind-blowing, yeah? Uh, but today, then like 40, 50 years ago, you know, when we first started recording, uh, the equipment, um, the, 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 uh, the, 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 we recorded on a, uh, a record machine called a Revox, which was two tracks. Today, you can record on, 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 with, with the computer, you can record up to a thousand tracks. But believe me when I tell you this in all sincerity, I prefer the recordings then than I do the recordings now. Because with all the multi-tracking that you're going to be doing, the recordings then, uh, to me, right, uh, are much better than today. 
When Mr. Dodd gave me the track and said, this is what I want you to record, I rehearsed the song, practiced it, and then we went in the studio, the band did the music, and then we were going to voice it. And Mr. Dodd had three girls, his back and vocalists, that used to you know, do all his, most of his work. Um, and this day I recorded you know, the voice, but I needed the girls were going to come in and do the back and vocals. But that same afternoon, you had guys who were waiting to go into the studio. So after you did yours, the next guys would go in and so on and so forth. But I was sitting outside waiting for the girls to come and they didn't show up. And Bob was getting anxious because he wanted to go somewhere else. So he wanted to go in and record his song. And um, Bob Marley. So we were out there and Bob was strumming his guitar. And then he turned to me and says, he says, Cobra, when are you going to record the, 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 the things, man? Finish your song. I said, well, I'm, I'm waiting on, on the girls to do the back and vocal. And he said, but I'm not come. Make we go do it. So we went in, you know. Uh, and we did the back and vocals, you know, and when we were finished, you know, it sounded fantastic, better than what the girls would do. So that evening after Bob, Bob finishes recording, we hung around and, and Mr. Dodd came, as usual, every evening, you would play all the songs that were recorded that day and listen, and he would go halfway through, and he stopped, go to another one, until he found the one that he wanted, and he'd think, yes, this is one I want. So he, he, he started playing to experience, and when he was playing it, he stopped and he says, boy, the girl them sound good, man. The girl them sound fantastic. And Bob said, Sir D, a me a call girl? And he said, no, the girls who did the back, you say, a me and Cobra do it, you know. And I said, that's a boy, you sound like he angels, man. <laughs> but Bob was really annoyed, you know, to, <laughs> Bob was a doctor was saying, you know, the girls, you know, because you can't call Bob a girl. <laughs> oh, uh, th there, were, there were a couple of songs, um, which is, uh, that the, 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 the become really underground hits, and what, what, what you would call iconic songs. I've got one called The Break. <laughs> Feel the inspiration coming on strong. The brave, the brave. I think I was the about brave. 18, 19, somewhere around there. Uh, it came out as Bob Melody, uh, not Winston Francis, and uh, it, it had another name on it uh, which I can't remember. There was also one, uh, one called uh, it, it Ain't, uh, which was by um, uh, Lloyd and Randolph. But it's it's a, a, a guy called Lloyd and myself, you know, um, and these songs uh, were actually produced by a guy called Johnny Golden. I remembered that, you know, some of the guys were recording in the, in in, uh, in in world records, you know, at the time. So, and the, the, there were guys like Ox Brown, you know, um, Jackie Jackson. Who who's plays with Toots and the Matles, you know, Winston Wright, you know, one of the best keyboard players in Jamaica, you know, deceased. Uh, but I knew they were there recording. And it, as long as they're recording, there's weed. So we said to the girls, let's go down there. So we jumped in the car, six of us in a Vauxhall, uh, in, in a, Zephyr, a Zephyr Zodiac, you know, crammed, but, you know, we all ugly together and we drove and we got down to the recording studio. When we got there, the guys were just finished recording. And when I walked in, you know, and Johnny, you know, said to Winston, you got anything we can smoke? And he said, yeah, we still have weed, man. And we all started billing some joints and, you know, and Johnny Golden turned to me and he said, why don't you do a song, Winston? Because tonight could be a big night, you know, and I said, Ah, man, he says, yeah, man, you could get a, you, it could be a break, you know. And Winston got up and he said, yeah, I've got a nice rhythm, Winston, that I think you would like. And he started playing, you, you know, this, you know, on the keyboard. And Ox just took out his guitar and Jackie got up and Paul, and the, everything just started turning over. And I, I, I stood up and wrote the song in which I said, the time has come for me to make up my mind. It's been so long, I wanted to sing my song, but something was holding me, 
holding me strong. Give me the reason to express my song. I feel the inspiration coming on strong. I need a break, a break, a break. The song was recorded and I didn't hear it again for maybe 20 years until I was in New York and heard it. And when I, I said, I the inspiration. And this guy said, Coming Yes, Big Tune by Bob the Melody. Brain, but we know it's you. The brain, <laughs> you know. The brain. Uh, well, I'm just to fix it. One of my biggest tracks. And uh, to date, um, and uh, it, I, I think it was, it, it was a stroke of luck why I actually wrote Mr. Fix It because um, I, 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 w I was going to school in the States then in Miami and uh, every time I'd come home, you know, I have a brother who always had problems with girls, always had problems. He was falling in and out of love with girls and every time that, you know, he had problems, he had to call me and say, come and talk to, to, to Cutie for me because, you know, she said she don't want to talk to me no more. And I was the, the guy who brought things back together. So this day, you know, I just came home. My suitcase wasn't open yet. And in come, run, runs my brother. He says, put, put the bag down. Come, you, you got to come with me. I said, where? He says, I want you to come and talk to Cutie, man, because she, 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 long, she don't want me to come inside her house. I says, I says, hang on a minute, Ricky. I says, you haven't even asked me if I'm well. You know, he says, I know you're well, man. Come, I am not well. Come sort me out. So I say, hang on a minute. I said, you think I'm some kind of Mr. Fix-It? And he said, yeah, you're my Mr. Fix-It. <laughs> and that's how, <laughs> that's how I wrote the song. You know, if you're feeling lonely because you're one and only, boy has found a girl and ran away. Just reach for your phone. You know, I'll be there at home. My name is Fix It, you know, and it's because of my brother. And... <laughs> That's perfect. That's great. Let, let, let me say one more thing about, yeah. about Mr. Fix It, because, um, like I said, most of the recordings that we did in Jamaica, we didn't get paid for it, right? And the same thing as, as Mr. Fix It. I, you know, Mr. Dodd is a great guy, a, a good friend, but we didn't get any money out of it until a group from Birmingham called UB40 recorded Mr. Fix-It. And when he did, you know, that was my first payment. And what a payment it was. Because that was from the first uh, first check, royalty check that I got. You know, and also it was part of um, the, 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 um, the uh, uh, by publishing. Because of my, that publishing deal, I received enough money for me to pay it on, on, on my first home. So thanks to UB40, Believe me, guys, thanks a million. You know, you guys are great. You know, my first house, you did it. <laughs>